Welcome back to the Pocono Raceway in Pennsylvania as the Pennsylvania 500 presented by Pep Boys continues. A huge sporting event here this afternoon. A unique track and certainly a unique infield and grandstand here. And next weekend, the NASCAR Winston Cup and Bush Series both race at Indianapolis. It'll be Bud Pole qualifying Saturday at 11 a.m. on TNT and the NASCAR final practice on CNN Sports Illustrated next weekend from Indianapolis. The Bush Series will be racing Saturday night, 8 o'clock on TNT, and then Sunday afternoon at 2 Eastern time, the Brickyard 400 from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Let's check out the stories on pit road, beginning with Dave Burns. Bill Ward Burton only qualified 34th. They thought they might have had a motor going bad, and he has charged from 34th up to the 10th place. The car is a little bit tight going into the corner, a little bit loose coming off, and that's a condition they hope will fix itself. He also radioed in to say he's very good in the tunnel turn now, which is something they were working on all weekend. Let's go to Marty Snyder. Well, Dave, there's a developing problem for our pole sitter, Todd Bodine. He said he is feeling a vibration in the transmission. I asked crew chief Larry Carter if he knew which car, which uh, gear the car was in. He said, I don't know. I'm afraid to ask right now. They don't know if he's running in third or fourth right now. Let's go to Matt Yoakum. Marty, a problem has developed on the leader's car, Jeff Gordon. The fuel pressure gauge is filling up with fuel. Robbie, what's wrong with your gauge? Well, the gauge, fuel pressure gauge is acting up. You know, Pocono sometimes comes down to fuel mileage. It's real hard. You have to get a good reading on it. We're just going to have to work with Brian White to real close on his fuel mileage and stuff. We'll see what happens. Is the gauge leaking at all? The gauge is not leaking, though, in the car. It's just, uh, like I said, it's a problem with the plug leaking real bad. And Jeff says it has filled up a little bit with fuel, but it is not leaking at this point. Jay Wiles, the engine specialist, does have a new fuel pressure gauge that if they do get a caution, they will try to change that. But at this point, they're just hanging on to see what happens. I doubt very seriously. They, they know about how many laps they can run on fuel, and changing the fuel pressure gauge would take quite a time, quite a bit of time. So I'm not sure... I'm not sure which one of these gauges, uh, probably the one over here would be the fuel pressure gauge, and it is, yeah, it's, hard, it's hard to read, but you're right, there's no way you'd want to stop changing fuel pressure gauge to take you right out of the race. But when the, usually when the fuel pressure gauge starts fluctuating, that means that you're out of fuel, that you're running out, but they obviously know that's not the case. And they know about how many laps they can go. So to be safe, they would just come in a lap or two early if they had to rely on that. They pitted at lap 36 last time. We've almost run another 36 lap segment. So we're going to begin to see some green flag pit stops here shortly for all the front runners. And if you're Jeff Gordon, you figure you could go 40 laps this time just to be safe. Maybe you come in at 38. Exactly right. If you don't trust your fuel pressure gauge, then you'd have to do something like that. How strong has Gordon been the last two months? Wow. Now Jeff is shifting in between turn one and two, where yes. Dale Jarrett was not. That's right. There he goes back into third gear, which, folks, once again, overdrive transmission. This is one-to-one. -one. And there we see Bobby Labonte trying to get by the eighth car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. That will be the battle for the fifth position. And there's Jimmy Spencer. Spencer had that spot, and both Earnhardt Jr. and Ricky Rook. I'm sorry, Bobby Labonte have gotten by him. And Todd Bodine has fallen back to eighth behind all of these cars. Gordon Rudd, Martin Elliott, and Earnhardt Jr. are the top five. It's the Pennsylvania 500 presented by Pep Boys. Pit stops coming up when we come back to Pocono on TNT. Back at Pocono, second caution is out in the Pennsylvania 500 presented by Pep Boys. Oil on the track, most likely from this car. And you know, that's spoil. Jeff Gordon's little party. He was having him a fine time out there, a garden party. But his teammate, Terry Labonte, tried to pull off the racetrack to get out of harm's way. But NASCAR felt like, well, maybe there was some oil out there. They better check the racetrack out. Terry tried his best to help his teammate out, but NASCAR didn't quite buy it. So the safety worker is going to push Terry out where he can get a lift back to the garage area from the tow truck. And the pace car has picked up the field. And we'll see some pit stops under caution this time instead of under the green. Only other yellow of the race, lap four. Buckshot Jones and Elliott Sadler involved in a crash off turn number three. Joe Nemechek, Casey Atwood. These guys are all hustling to catch up to the pace car. Michael Walter. Be careful, boys, because the 
field is 50 is 65 miles per hour on the back stretch and we realize you're running about 180 right now but their spotter will warn them when they start catching that slower traffic there's tony stewart has caught them they want to go make some changes on that two car on this pit stop i'd almost guarantee well you know you, uh, bill was talking about the spring rubber you know, bill weber had the spring rubber taken out of the right rear Some, sometimes when you stiffen up that right rear, it keeps the spoiler up in the air, which makes the car tighter. So they probably were hoping it would loosen it up from the middle off, but actually tighten the car up. Stops will be as the leaders complete the 70th lap. And it'll be Gordon, Rudd, Martin, Elliott, and Earnhardt Jr., the top five in, followed by Bobby Labonte, Jimmy Spencer, Todd Bodine, Johnny Benson, and Ward Burton. Rusty's back in 19th position. And Dale Jarrett continues to move up. He's in 13th spot coming to this set of stops. So here we go. Let's go to Dave. And Dale Jarrett is in for a four-tire change. They're going to completely reverse the chassis adjustment they made last time. And let's go up pit road to Bill Weber. Ricky Rudd and Mark Martin all on pit road along with everybody else. Rudd needs more grip. They're going to try and correct that with air pressure. A track bar adjustment for Mark Martin, who is loose in turn one, but tight in turns two and three. Both teams have good stops. Go Jeff Gordon calling for a wedge adjustment. His car was a little bit loose in all three corners. He's down and away. Will he beat the 28 off pit road? It does not look like it. No air pressure adjustment for the 24 to Marty Snyder. And Bill Elliott came in. He was a little tight in to fix that. They took a half pound out of the right front, a little loose off to fix that. Down on the track bar one round. He came in running fourth. A great stop for these guys. And Ricky Rudd pulled out like he thought he won that battle off pit road. Last week we saw ups and downs for Ricky Rudd's crew. They got him the lead on a stop at New Hampshire. Then the Jackman slipped and fell, and they lost some spots. There it is. Hey, he won. No doubt about it. There's the line. This line... How they cross that line will tell them how they're going to restart this race. Dale Jr. out third. So Ricky Rudd is the new leader. The Pennsylvania 500 presented by Pet Boys. Back at Poco, Pocono, cleanup continuing after Terry Labonte's car apparently dropped some oil on the track. Here's our pit summary. Mark Martin losing a couple spots, but the key one, the top two. Key ones. Key ones, top yes. Two. Jeff Gordon lost a spot. Ricky Rudd gained one. Dale Nair Jr. moves into the third spot. Rudd's crew pretty pleased by their performance. Yes! Yes! That a boy! Uh, <laughs> they can get pumped, can't Atta they? boy, John. It's John Bryan, the Jackman, on the team. Back to the restart at Pocono. Will they get five wide on the restart? Like Wally talked about at the top of the show. Okay, you can't pass to the left until you go across the line. But now you can. Mike Walsh drives out. Here comes Mark Martin. And there's him. Five, four wide. One and one is Kevin Harvick. Plus the Blaney car, 93. Mike's a lap down, 32nd place. Bill Elliott, alongside Bobby Labonte, the square D car, 55, is a lap down. There's Bobby Hamilton, and Bobby Labonte right behind them. Check him out. As he go in the corner, as we're changing that for camera angle. The 24 car is first, Dale Jr. second, and Ricky Rudd is third. Down the back stretch. All of them up to 180. Jeff Gordon in the corner, 190 miles per hour. Dale Jr. Rudd. 
The four car, Kevin LeFay, still in front of Jeff Gordon. Here comes Gordon. He has position. Kevin in 30th place, trying to stay on the tail end of the lead lap. Didn't work. 